Hey guys, Brandon from GameStop Canada here. Recently, Splatoon 3 inked its way onto the scene, and we wanted to take a look at all of the new ways that you can play Splatoon 3, be it revamps to old game modes or new game modes entirely, including a single player campaign. So we're gonna dive in to all of the new things in Splatoon 3. On the player versus player side of things, we've got some new changes to Turf War, as well as brand new game modes. Let's take a look. Naturally, in a place called Splatsville, the locals' favorite pastime is Turf Wars. Turf Wars is a game mode where two teams of four players go head to head, trying to ink up the map as much as possible and claim the most turf for their team within three minutes. New techniques have been introduced, like the Squid Surge, which allows you to swim up walls in a quick burst, or the Squid Roll, which allows you to jump out of ink while turning around. If your character glows while executing either of these new moves, you'll also repel incoming enemy ink. Your turf war battles are going to play out on a variety of exotic new locations. The Splatlands has lots of new places to ink up, like Eel Tail Alley, Scorch Gorge, Mincemeat Metalworks, and the Undertow Spillway. There's also the new Hagglefish Market, a pier filled to the brim with plenty of street vendors. Several stages from Greater Inkopolis are also making an appearance in Splatoon 3, like Mahi Mahi Resort and Hammerhead Bridge. There's a total of 12 stages awaiting you at launch, with more to come along the way in various DLC updates. Splatfests have also made a comeback. Players will vote online for one of three options among a set theme that was announced. Then, they'll defend that choice by facing off against the other two choices in a series of battles over a set period of time. Splatfests will consist of two halves. In the first half, teams will go head-to-head -head in standard turf war battles to represent their choice. In the second half, however, things get a little bit more interesting, as tricolor turf war battles are introduced. Tricolor turf war battles consist of three teams going head-to-head -head in one match. However, the team with the leading choice in the Splatfest will get a team of four versus a team of two and another team of two from the other two remaining choices. Can the leading team survive and make it out on top against the 4v2v2 structure? Find out when you jump into your own Splatfest. Fests. The Table Turf Battle Dojo, located in Splatsville's vacant lot, is home to the newest game mode introduced in Splatoon 3, Table Turf Battles. In this 1v1 competitive card battle spin-off of Turf War, players will collect over 150 cards that allow them to ink up shapes, charge up special powers, and even unleash devastating comeback attacks, keeping them in the game for as long as possible, and keeping players on edge. Lastly for PvP is the rotating objective battles where players are going to compete for rankings, Anarchy Battles. Anarchy Battles consists of four separate game modes, which will continuously be on rotation. Splat Zones, Rainmaker, Tower Control, and Clam Blitz. If you're looking to take on Anarchy Battles solo, make sure you enroll through Anarchy Battles series. However, if you're looking to go into it with a group of friends, head over to Anarchy Battles Open in order to take on the toughest opponent. And of course, with all of these new game modes available and different ways to play, we're going to need a fresh arsenal of weapons to splat our way to victory. Let's take a look at some of the new main weapons and special weapons joining us in Splatoon 3. The first of two new main weapons joining us is the Tri-Stringer, which is a bow-like projectile launcher that can fire in three directions simultaneously, and charge shots will also freeze before exploding. Then we have the Splatana Wiper, which sends blades of ink flying just from the force generated by swinging it. If swung while fully charged, you'll unleash devastating charge slash. Plus, all the main weapons from previous Splatoon games will be available in Splatoon 3 on day one. Splatoon 3 also brings some new and unique special weapons, like the Tacticooler, which, when activated, a fridge will appear, which dispenses refreshing beverages for you and your teammates that also provides some heavy buffs. There's also the Wave Breaker, which emits sonic waves around the area. And then there's the Reef Slider, a shark-shaped, ink-propelled float that sails forward and explodes into giant globs of ink. We're also going to see some returning special weapons from the Splatoon series, like the Tenta Missiles, Ink Jet, Ink Storm, Ultra Stamp, and the Booyah Bomb. Another important facet is style. Now, there's a lot of customization features coming to Splatoon 3, but one of the most important will be your splash tag. Splash tags will appear at the beginning of battles, and they're fully customizable as your own individual identifier. You can change your title, background, badge, and even customize your own win emote. All of the customization options for your splash tag and more will be located at a general store called Hotlantis, located on the edge of Splatsville. Hotlantis will offer a seasonal catalog that will give you access to gear as well as ability chunks and all of the customization for your splash tag. Make sure you check it out and keep yourself up to date on all the latest style. Now that we've covered
covered all of the player versus player aspects coming in Splatoon 3, let's take a look at some of the co-op stuff that you can feature with a returning fan favorite, Salmon Run. The Salmon Run mode returns, and this time it's playable at any time. Up to four players can jump into a match and collect power eggs from the advancing Salmonid, defending their territory as they go. Throughout Salmon Run, players will encounter new boss type Salmonids, like the Slam and Lid and the Big Shot. But more importantly, keep your eyes out for Kohozuna, a new King Salmonid and a super giant Salmonid boss. When battling a King Salmonid, the tank on a player's back is going to transform into an egg cannon. Collect the golden eggs to deal massive amounts of damage to a King Salmonid and give him the boot. On top of that, a new special event is coming for Salmon Run called Big Run, where Salmonids will come and invade where Inklings and Octolings live, and you'll have to defend against them. If you're looking for some single player content, Splatoon 3 has an all new story mode that you can access. If you're new to the game, it's the best place to learn how to get familiar with weapons as well as how the battle mechanics work in the game. On top of that, you'll set out on an adventure to discover what Alterna, the Fuzzy Ooze, is and how it fits into the game's theme. In the story, you'll play as Agent 3, the newest recruit to the new Squidbeak Splatoon, and you'll take on the Octarian army, whose members are furry for some reason. Partnered with your small fry buddy, you'll ink your way through multiple stages, each one with their own unique twists and turns. So much is unfolding in the Splatlands, with more to come. A new catalog will drop for free every three months for the next two years, and on top of that, they'll bring in changes like new weapons and more. Plus, there are plans to release X-Battle and Battle League in the future, and if that's still not enough, large-scale DLC will be dropping as well. Splatoon 3 has so much to offer for new and returning Squid Kids alike, and with more content on the way, you'll be inking up the Splatlands in no time. Paint your way over to GameStop.ca or visit your local GameStop to shop for Splatoon 3 and a Nintendo Switch Online membership today. And that's our coverage for Splatoon 3. Let us know in the comments below if you've picked up the game yet or if you're planning to. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell for all of the latest gaming content. Until then, I'm Brandon for GameStop, and we'll see you in the next video.